This moment has been a very long time in the making. The voice to parliament will allow us to be the decision makers of our own destinies. I don't support the voice. I will be voting yes. I will be voting no. I am absolutely voting yes. As Australians, we have an extraordinary privilege. We share this great island continent with the world's oldest continuous culture. A proposed law to alter the constitution to recognise the First Peoples of Australia. The last successful referendum we had was in 1967, and that granted the right for Indigenous Australians to be counted as part of the Australian population. Historically, they don't happen very often, and when they do happen, they're incredibly difficult to get over the line. The question that Australians will be asked at this year's referendum is a very simple one. Do you approve this proposed alteration? Nothing more, but nothing less. The Voice to Parliament is a very simple idea. It is a committee of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples chosen by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. According to what I've heard is meant to be an advisory committee. A representative body. That will provide advice to the government on issues that are pertinent to Indigenous Australians. To tell government and parliament what is and is not working in their communities. To allow our First Nations people to have a seat at the table and have a say on the laws and policies that affect us in our communities. There might be a little bit more to it. It could be a gateway to treaty and reparations and that sort of thing. This is a far-reaching and radical proposal. The Voice is a group rights body which will sit into the Constitution next to the Senate and the House of Representatives. To advise parliaments and governments about the issues that have a really particular impact on Indigenous peoples across the country. The voice would be guaranteed in the Constitution, but how it works, many of its functions, its structure, number of members it has, its budget, that would be determined by parliament after a period of consultation but its capacity to make representations is virtually open-ended. This is a very wide-ranging power. For Indigenous rights! For Indigenous rights! The Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Voice may make representations to the Parliament and the Executive Government of the Commonwealth on matters relating to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. The Parliament shall, subject to this constitution, have power to make laws with respect to matters relating to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voice, including its composition, functions, powers and procedures. If there is overreach in what the Prime Minister is proposing in his wording, if it does go too far and the High Court interpretation is more liberal, as the Solicitor General and the Attorney General have advised, what happens then? This is a dangerous and costly proposal. It is legally risky and full of unknowns. It is exploitative. It is emotionally manipulative. But worst of all, from the day Mr Albanese put his wording to the Australian people, the process of division was begun. We are being divided. We will be further divided throughout this campaign. And if the yes vote is successful, we will be divided forever. I want to see Australia move forward as one, not two divided. That's why I will be voting no. I've been a strong supporter for many, many years of Indigenous recognition in the Constitution but I don't support the voice. I will be voting yes at the referendum. I will be voting no simply because I have not been persuaded to vote yes. I have not seen a good case. I, as the director of the yes uh, campaign uh, for the voice referendum this year, I am absolutely voting yes. The reason I don't support the voice is because of principle and practicality. In terms of principle, the voice involves putting a group rights institution into the Constitution. I think that's a mistake. I think any body in the Constitution should represent overall Australian opinion, 
not the opinion of one group in the population. I've been listening to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples across the country over the last six and a half years since the Uluru Statement from the Heart. This idea has come from Indigenous peoples. It is wanted by Indigenous peoples because we want to make a practical impact on the lives in our communities. That is why I'm voting yes and that's why I'm encouraging many other Australians to vote yes alongside me. So a referendum is a vote of all of Australian people over the age of 18. You need a majority of yes votes in a majority of states and a majority overall. It's commonly known as a double majority. And that's incredibly difficult to get. Um, if you can think back to um, the last referendum we had, that was whether or not we should become a republic and that failed. The whole argument started with Indigenous Australians lack a voice. And that is just absolute nonsense. So just on that alone, it's difficult to persuade me to vote yes. We want all Indigenous Australians to have the same opportunities as you and I and most other Australians have, and indeed many other Indigenous Australians have them. I have not been convinced and I'm, I'm always open. You know, someone may have a last minute convincing argument, but you know, to say that they lack a voice, that makes it pretty difficult to uh, capture my interest. I believe that the voice to parliament will be substantial change in structural reform within our communities, which will allow us to be the decision makers of our own destinies. We want to ensure and educate Australians on this matter because at the end of the day, everyone will vote at referendum day and we want them to make an informed and conscious decision rather than anything they've heard or misinform information. You've got to think very carefully, is this the appropriate institution that you want to see in the Australian Parliament. It's a gift to the Australian people to walk with us for a better future. Political correctness has seen a almost a reinventing and romanticising of Indigenous culture. We have been taught to believe that dot paintings and welcome to country are so sacred and an expression of traditional Indigenous culture, which it's not. So, you know, PC has prevented us from, you know, getting to the, the basics safe homes, safe communities, that sort of thing. The concept of the voice isn't new. You know, when people say, well, where does this come from? It, it came from the earlier statement from the heart. It came from the Kira Billy statement. It came from the Branga statement. It came from all these calls and offers and petitions for people to listen to us in our own country. So it is. it holds a very close place to my heart because I want to make sure that we can impact change and impact change in our lifetime. And our culture is all about, you know, looking after the generations and the generations after that and looking out after our little jarjams, our, our little kids, our little gundus. Well, the yes side sees the voice having the capacity to close the gap. That is an extremely ambitious aspiration. This referendum offers a once in a generation chance to bring this country together. I'm voting no because I don't want to see Australia divided along the lines of race. It will provide a way to change the mess that we have in Aboriginal affairs. We already have many expensive bureaucracies. We just don't need another one. Our history is so traumatic. Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander people have been through a lot. It's just all about impacting change. All of our First Nations people have stories of intergenerational trauma and, and how the system has not been so beneficial for us. But it's time now and it's time to change. I think from the heart, but also be led by the grey matter here. Um, if we are too emotional, we can easily be fooled into thinking that, you know, this wonderful voice will just fix everything up and we've got to do this because we're good citizens and if we don't do it, we're bad citizens. You've got to have rights and responsibilities. I actually support native title and welfare reform. We've got to get the two things in balance and my entire public life for my people has been dedicated towards getting a complementary approach of rights and responsibilities and I believe that this voice proposal will lock that whole paradigm together. Based on what Indigenous people have told me they want from the voice, and I think the first matter of business will be closing the gap. 
That's something that we've been trying to do as a nation in a measured way since 2008 and it's not working. We've managed to reduce the gap in line with four of the 17 targets, but there's still many, many things left to be done. There is a hopeful message from Indigenous people that this can be done with the resources we already have. And that, they say, is because there's a lot of money being misdirected in Indigenous affairs. We all know there is a lot of money washing around in Indigenous affairs and the Productivity Commission says something like 27 cents in the dollar actually reaches the communities it's intended to help. Voice proponents such as Megan Davis say the Voice will have a strong interest in finding out where these misdirected and wasted funds are going because it is in their interest to find this out. Recently I was in a community in the Kimberleys in a remote area of northern western Australia. It was a community forum, about 80 people there. And a man, uh, an Aboriginal man, probably in his 50s I'd say, um, stands up in front of the room and says, oh, I've never registered to vote in my life. I've never voted in any election in my lifetime. I'm leaving this meeting and I'm going out now and I'm registering so that I can vote in the referendum this year because I want to achieve a yes vote. This is the emotional blackmail, which I don't like about The Voice, is that you know, Australia will be seen as a racist country if we say no. That shout, that claim, that myth, that will be seen as racist for five minutes maybe. If you want to be a part of the system, you have to change the system. And I truly believe that the Uluru Statement from the Heart and the First Nations Voice to Parliament will, will do that and will make change and will be a better future for Australia. If the voice gets up, then Australia has fundamentally voted for change. History is going to remember this very favourably. History will record the moment that we were tapped on the shoulder, this generation of Australians were tapped on the shoulder to do something very simple, to recognise Indigenous peoples as the first peoples of our country. That's something that many Australians have a great deal of pride in. What happens if the no case prevails? That should not be a moment of celebration. There would be nothing to celebrate. It should be a moment of reassessment. And let's revisit this issue and have a new debate about how we achieve Indigenous recognition.